Hickok 45 here. Is that pretty or what? Yeah. Looks a little different maybe from the last time you saw it. My Uberti 1873 Winchester reproduction. Uh, it's been with me a long time. You see the title, 25 years ago I purchased it, 1998. According to my math, that's 25 years. It has been a friend to me, yes. Through all sorts of trials and tribulations. <laughs> Actually, not really, just a lot of serious engagements though. Really, serious firefights, especially at cowboy matches, cowboy action shooting matches, right? With all sorts of desperados, steel plates, things like that, you know, in cowboy action shooting. And uh, just wanted to celebrate 25 years. And I had a friend do refinish the stock on me. I've never been a fan of the Uberti reddish wood finish that, that comes on most of them. And uh, I asked, he, he likes to do this. He specialized in it and everything. I said, well, we refinish this thing. And so he did. And uh, yeah, it, that looks a lot better, I think. So let's shoot it. You want to? Oh yeah, let's pop something. I have a hard time without the extender on it. How about a cowboy? Yeah. <laughs> That's what needs to be shot. A cowboy for sure. And how about a, how about a Kentucky two liter down there? And how about one on the gong? Yeah, we'll leave it empty under the uh, the hammer there. <laughs> Oh, that is, uh, it's always been a great shooter. It's always been reliable. Watch it mess up today. Uh, but it, it's, it's been great. And before we go too far and I slobber on it too much, I want to thank the people that help us. So, yeah, it's just a 25, 25th anniversary. I'm going to bring it out and shoot it some. And I am going to now get a good look at that stock. Isn't that pretty? Uh, it, it's funny because, you know, you've seen this. I had it wrapped in buffalo hide for my cowboy action days and you know all that and i had a pad back there and had it wrapped up and you know extender and all that so i hadn't seen that butt plate you know in in like 20 years more than 20 years <laughs> and i was looking for it and I, I is that it is that it it's like that's a brand new uh, bluing job on that he didn't re-blue anything it's just it's been covered up and protected all these years and so it looks like it's brand new doesn't it and so i cannot find a uh a pad that, that fits. Let me grab this one real quick. Uh, I threw another one in the uh, four-wheeler thinking, well, maybe it'll fit better. I tried them all, but yeah, that was too big. Okay, this one's dirty, but that's okay. This firearm, now I know I, I can get by with some firearms. This one's really hard to shoot. It puts my eye so close to the, uh, to the sight that it's, it's just really no fun to shoot. This is a crazy, I don't know who made this one, but uh, it slips on a little bit further and doesn't come off even though it's a little too large. Okay, so I know it's ugly, but it just makes it more fun to shoot. So let's shoot it, okay? <laughs> Got a few more rounds in here. Let me see if I can hit a buffalo over there. Uh, I don't know what that was about. There we go. I think hold a little bit too low. Let's try a red plate on the left. Boom. You always tell when you hit. And I don't like these two liters staring at me either. Yeah, desperado. <laughs> oh, empty. Uh, a great shooter. No doubt about it. I uh, bought it in, as I said, 1998. I got into the Cowboy Ashton shooting in 97. And I, I started with my, uh, oh, no, what do you call it, the Marlin 1894, you know, in 45 Colt. You've seen it. It's one of my favorite firearms uh, as well. We did, a, I think, a 25th anniversary on it, I guess, last year or earlier this year. And uh, a lot of people were using that, but there were a few using the, uh, the reproductions of the 1873. And then more and more and more, you would see this one. 
and uh, I was sort of on the lookout for one just because I'd always wanted an 1873. It's just that all the originals are chambered in cartridges that you know you can't find in bulk packs at Walmart. You know at that time, you know 4440. Yeah. You know? And uh, and some other uh, chamberings, uh, whereas these were chambered in 45 Colt and some other you know, more common calibers, and so that's the appeal. Plus, you're going if you're going to go out and shoot and compete with it, you don't necessarily want an original to, to wear out. Although some people do it, and I got to where I did that with the Colts. But uh, so anyway, I used it a lot after I got it, and uh, I'd go back and forth. Then I got to where I just used this. It's about all I used in the matches, but. Uh, and again, before we go any further, I want to thank Alabama Holster. Uh, great, great holster makers. They are uh, you know, simple, uh, functional, handcrafted, you know, out of Kydex, and just really, really, really work. You've seen them here on the channel for years and years whenever I, yeah, whenever I pull out a pocket gun. And uh, they've also got some neat... Uh, 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 belt holsters that I've not, I didn't know about. And I had him send me a couple, and uh, pretty nice for Glock 19 and some others. So, they're very simple and and not not large, uh, very big, but just work well. So we appreciate their support. Uh, so, as I was saying, I uh, I kind of moved to this gun after I don't know a couple three years, and and I even shot muzzleloader or black powder rather, not muzzleloader. I shot black powder cartridges in it. I got to where I shot uh, the last, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight years that I did this, I shot Frontier Cartridge. Many of you know what that means, of course. That's black powder cartridges. Uh, and uh, that's in, in the shotgun, the handgun, and the rifle. And of course, one of the nice things about it was my my Colts were always 45 Colt, and so is this, same caliber, same ammo, you know, exactly. And the only thing I had to have different was my shotgun ammo. I'll load while I'm yakking. But, I got to where I just really liked it. It's a tough choice because it and the Marlin 1894 are just great rifles. Smooth and easy to hit with. I'll tell you one of the problems I had too, once I started using this, I don't think I'm misspeaking or telling you a lie. I put the Skinner sights on that Marlin. I don't know, somewhere I experienced them on a gun or shot somebody's or whatever. And so I was using this and I put the Skinner sights on that Marlin and, and boy, I, I can really uh, pop with it. Yeah, Cause I like it. And that's what you get with the marbles, kinda. You get a ring back here, ghost ring, peep sight, whatever. And at that time in cowboy action shooting, SAS, I think I, it wasn't legal you know, to use it once I put the Skinner sights on it. Now it may be now, but I don't think it was back in the 90s. And, uh, but that was fine with me because I relegated it to just other shooting and, and, uh, and I love those sights so much. I left them on there. So, let's shoot some more. How about it? It's a celebration. It's just an anniversary. I'm going to shoot that uh, coffin down there. Yeah. And that turkey hanging down there. Yeah. <laughs> and that gong hanging over there. And that buffalo. I think it went low again. Yeah, got to get it up. All right. How about these guys right here? Click. <laughs> And, uh, and that's the beauty. If you've never done cowboy action shooting or you've just never been to a range with a firearm like this, one of the, the enjoyments that I think a lot of people get out of it is it is a pistol. It's a pistol caliber carbine or a pistol caliber rifle. And as I mentioned quite often, they're just fun. They're just fun. For one thing, there's nothing you can't shoot with it that you can't shoot with a handgun. If you're at a range, on your range, wherever you might be, and there's some uh, steel targets, that you pop with your nine millimeter, 45, 40. Uh, you can bring a rifle out like this and you can you can shoot them with this. Yeah, so that's always fun. I, I had a friend too that, that uh, when I first got into cowboy shooting, he was shooting one of these. And I was a little wary because he seemed like he always had trouble with his uh, elevator adjusting it here and would have uh, function issues with it. But 
I don't know. I, I, I never have, <laughs> knock on wood. And uh, apparently that's just not a common problem. You get it adjusted right and they just, they just work. By the way, I bought, you know, for funny, for years, I, I just seemed like I remembered buying this at uh, Nashville at a gun show. And I may have even said that in a video and lied to you. Uh, but I got to look into my record. I actually bought this in Louisville, the Louisville gun show in uh, Kentucky. And I, I guess I kind of remember that. Uh, and that's the thing when you trade, buy so many firearms, but that's where I, I found it. I remember looking at one at the Nashville gun show and, you know, and almost buying it, I guess, and yeah, how that is. And when I was sort of in the market for one. And I paid like 700, 600 something for it. Uh, of course, now they're, they're, they're even twice that, right? I guess. Uh, but it's been a good one. And uh, I'm proud to celebrate it. You know what? I haven't shot the target yet. Let's shoot that bullseye. Let's see how if it's still accurate at long range. Click. Yeah, not enough powder. Yeah, still accurate at long range. Look at that. Man, cut the same hole. I'll tell you, that kind of accuracy, how could you miss? Even if you're shooting at a wild boar. Yeah, like that guy. <laughs> so that makes it fun. You know, being able to just shoot anything uh, at any pistol distance. Even a propane tank, bowling pin sticking out of one. <laughs> and let's, let's finish up on the gong over there. on Sunday and shoot all week it holds a uh, 13 so yeah just a little celebration glad you're here uh, just uh, a fine rifle even though they were never chambered in 45 cold as I pointed out quite often uh, yeah I mean until the reproductions you know started coming along uh, that's okay that's okay and because uh, it's a reproduction anyway so, so what but uh, Nice gun, I'll take that ugly thing off. And uh, nice wood under there. Some of you, many of you have Uberti or Cimarronio reproductions, and you might wonder what the wood looks like. And I don't know if it looks like this one. I was kind of surprised, uh, you know, because they, they have that reddish tint, the finish. I just never really liked that much. And, uh, but it, look at that grain. It's incredible, incredible. And somehow they covered that up and and get that red effect and uh some people like that and i've always uh noted in a movie you know, like whether it's tombstone or any of the modern westerns the good westerns uh like you can pick out the uberti uh clones you know from a mile away because of that wood you know to me as far as i'm concerned you can so anyway a little celebration it's an 1873 reproduction you know winchester this is the 1873 and you already makes a nice, uh, you know, reproduction of it, and it seems to work. And I used to get it so dirty with black powder cartridges, and, and I, I take the side plates off and clean that thing and wash it out. And it was the only lever gun, because you get in a lever gun, you you got a mess with black powder smudge, right? It's not like a single shot. You know? And uh, but I, I made the decision. Okay, this one firearm I will shoot black powder cartridges in. I never did that with the Marlin, or didn't want, didn't do it with 1886 or any others, even for fun. I could have, but I, I just didn't want to get into the black powder in those. This one I did it, and I really didn't have any deterioration or anything. I'd soak it with ballistol, uh, and then I would just take the plates off and, and and really do a thorough cleaning, pretty thorough cleaning, maybe once a year. And I'd find you know, the the residue in there, uh, but the the ballistol kept it from uh, rusting or having any problem with it. Kept it soft and all that. So, so I really didn't clean it as often as you would think. I would just keep it soaked. <laughs> it could uh, the next weekend or I might be going out again, you know, and, and hammering away with uh, black powder cartridges, real black powder too. So. Thank you, good old uh, you, Birdie, for 25 years of service. Uh, you know, I actually, you know, won some matches. You know, uh, firing this this baby. So uh, it served me well. I can't remember it ever malfunctioning. So I appreciate you.
Appreciate you all too for coming by. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastol.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.